Disclaimer. Please check your playback settings. Ensure you are listening to this podcast at normal speed. Unless you want us to sound drunk. Then play at half speed. Thank you. And welcome to the final game of the Intramural Podcast Sports Type Tournament. We're your Rob's Custom PC announcing team, and I'm Don Klinger. And I'm Rick Ruckus. And I'm Stevie Dreamy Smalls. After six rounds of boxing, jousting, tennis, and everything else you can think of, they finally ran out of real sports to play. And since nobody wants to try curling, we're going back to baseball. I've been informed that we have a new rule in place. After 70 years of hosting podcast tournaments, no homemade bets, no magical items, no intervention, divine or otherwise, will be allowed. You know, Don, those have been staples of sports for centuries. Whatever happened to the spirit of competition there, Don? The spirit tried to summon the ninth layer of hell to win a game, Rick. Speak of the devil, the Fire Pit Podcast has taken the field. These three have crushed figurative dreams and literal bones and stand undefeated as they enter this championship. If I wasn't three weeks sober from gambling, I'd bet they'd be a sure thing. Matter of fact, I think I need to go speak. No, 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 Rick, Rick, no, no, Rick, 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 stay put, stay put, just stay strong, buddy, stay strong. You've made it this far, come on. But they don't look none too happy about these rules, Rick. But thankfully, we've marked the field so we can hear what's going on with the team. So let's get a listen to what they're saying about all this now. You've got to be kidding me. Like, no magic bats or magic books. I mean, come on. We're still only three people. Nigel, Nigel, relax, relax. we still got a chance. Just remember the plan. We'll just do like we did in the tennis tournament. We'll cheat. It'll be fine. You know what this is, right? It's a goddamn conspiracy. Like, they're trying to shut us down just like how they shut down Showbiz Pizza a few years back. Dan, what are you talking about? Showbiz Pizza, you guys remember? Like, you know, the pizza place with the animatronic band? They say they got bought out by Chuck E. Cheese's, but in reality, it's a giant front to train a robot army until the Illuminati decided... And it appears we're experiencing some technical difficulties right now. What what are you talking about there, Don? I saw you hit the mute button on them down there in the fire pit. I'm pretty sure he was done talking anyways. You know, it sounded like he had a lot more to say there, Don. Just call the game, Rick. And we have the challengers, the underdog podcast, the team with everything to win. Leading off, we have Jimmy, who's here to win enough money for his sister's surgery. And Annie Angelique. Her parents are going through a pretty tough divorce, and she's taking it pretty hard. But if they win this, there could be a chance that they will stay together for her. Now missing from the team is Bob Blassett, who is currently hospitalized following an injury sustained from trying to play Dragon Forces through the fire and flame on expert mode on Guitar Hero. Ouch. On the traditional controller, no less. I know, Don, completely reckless, but what can you do? But I've been told that just before the game, the team promised him that they're going to win this tournament in his honor. And replacing him as pitcher is the latest addition to the Underdog Podcast. Hi, everybody. It's me, Ricky. It's Ricky, the eight-year-old in an 80-year-old's body. Though his podcast, the Gridiron Podcast, was knocked out of this tournament by the fire pit three rounds ago, he was brought in on the last minute to fill their roster. Now he may have that Benjamin Button disease and is still in a complete body cast thanks to the fire pit, but he's coming in with determination and true grit. And what heart. But it looks like this development is causing a bit of a stir with the fire pit podcast. Let's hear what they have to say. Team, I don't like the looks of this. What are you talking about? Half their team is made up of orphans, and the other half were outcasts from the Make-A-Wish Foundation. I was worried for nothing. Besides, we still got Josh's pitching arm. Uh, about that, I might have gone to the doctor to get it fixed. Why would you do that? So you know how whenever I would pitch, it would throw the ball, like, really fast? Uh-huh. It wasn't just when I pitched. So no matter how much lotion I used, when I had my me time, the chafing would just get really, really bad, and then blisters would... Oops! There go those technical difficulties again! But now that we know the stakes, let's play ball! 
Welcome back. We're at the bottom of the ninth here in the tournament, and what a game this has been. Truly, truly the reason why I got into broadcasting so many years ago. It's the Fire Pit's turn at bat now, and Tom looks calm and composed as ever. He's got that eye of the tiger about him. Ooh, he's looking confident. And what is this? It seems that both Dan and Josh are following him to the plate. Tom is looking as confused as a mule in a tutu during a barnyard hoedown. You know, I'm curious. Let's cut to the field and see what that's going on down there. What the hell are you two doing up here? Don't worry, Tom. We got your back. Got my back? You're supposed to be waiting for your turn. And Josh, why are you eating dandelions? All right. No, 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 how can you have concussions already? We haven't done anything yet! What kind of radio force gun bullshit are you pulling now? Get back to the dugout! You're acting completely re- Ridiculous! Sorry about that, we thought that was going to be much worse. You goddamn sons of- And that's just gonna stay off. Tom doesn't look like he's got much choice but to bat with Josh and Dan right there up there with him. This is going to be interesting. They settle into their stance. Ricky leans in as best he can in a full body cast. It looks like he's shaking off the first sign. Oh, now he's shaking off the second too. That uh, catch is looking a little frustrated. Oh, looks like he's taking the third sign. He's reeling back. The pitch! Hey. They didn't even try to swing! They just watched that ball go by! And the three just staring off into a daze. I don't think they realize what just happened. Oh, uh, wait. There's some commotion on the field now. The underdog podcast coach is coming out to the field. Uh, now, there seems to be a discussion between him and the ump. Uh, now, the coach is deaf, so the argument is in sign language. But for what I can make out, yes, he's, he's saying that since there's three of them at plate, it should count as three strikes. And since all three have struck out now at the same time... Wait, wait, that counts as three strikes? No! Yes! The umpire is counting it! The, the fire, fire pitch, pitch strikes, strikes out. out! And with that, the underdogs take the tournament, beating the fire pit 30 to 1. What a completely expected and anticlimactic turn of events. I tell you, Don, that's got to sting hotter than five rounds of hot cockles with my granny and ma. Yes, Rick, we've all seen your Christmas videos. But let's get back to the field to hear how the fire pit are taking their defeat. Oh, son of a bitch. Mm. Are you fucking kidding me. Ah, you stupid friggin' terrible. Yeah, yeah let's, let's watch a movie, movie guys. guys. into its next journey of the second season, striking out the competition and sliding into home with the classic Chadwick Boseman film about the legendary Jackie Robinson himself, 42! It's curveballs and clinch plays every Tuesday here at the Fire Pit. Play ball! Bots and listeners, and welcome back to another episode of The Fire Pit. I'm Tom, the editor, Thompson, and The Fire Pit has struck out. Well, you think that was just a clever title? We told you what was going to happen at the end of this thing from the beginning. Why are you so surprised? But finally, we're reaching our second destination film of season two. We've batted, we've volleyed, we've tackled and jousted our way here for the last six weeks, and finally, we've made it to the home plate. And as per our rules, we've taken an actor or actress from our last film and moved them on to this one. Now, to tell us more about who we're watching and what we're watching, I send things over to Dan. Thank you, Tom. Hello, everyone. I'm Dan, the angry one, Nigel, and welcome to episode 42. Uh, 62, Dan. Episode 
62. You write the scripts. Come on. Oh, oh right. Well, uh, <clears throat> yeah, episode 62. Uh, last week, we followed Paul Bettany from Wimbledon to A Knight's Tale, where he proceeded to have much better romantic chemistry with Alan Tudyk than he ever did with Kirsten Stewart. So we'll be following him into tonight's film, 2013's 42, the story of Jackie Robinson, the first African-American player to play for a Major League Baseball team in baseball's modern era. I'll get more into that during trivia later. But for now, to give us more of a rundown on tonight's film, I'll send the pitch over to Josh. Why, thank you, Dan. Josh, the wrong one, Reginald here. And as mentioned before, we're watching 2013's 62, a historical biographical film about Jackie <laughs> Robinson. <laughs> I write the scripts, remember? <laughs> I don't get the joke. Anywho, yes, it stars Chadwick Boseman, Harrison Ford, and obviously Alan Tudyk with uh, Christopher Milani and Nicole Bahari. I hope I pronounced those right. R-I-G-H-T. But 42 was released <laughs> April 12th, 2013. It has a running time of 128 minutes. It had a budget of $40 million, and it had a box office pull of $97.5 million. So it made its money. I'll go ahead and just segue right into the, bo the box office stuff here. It did make $95 million of that domestically and $2.4 million of that um, internationally for a total worldwide release of uh, 97.4 million. Pretty impressive given its April release for a total worldwide release of $97.4 million. So on its opening weekend, it premiered at number one. Now, typically February or really January through April is considered kind of a graveyard for the box office. So a lot of times uh, movies, especially science fiction type movies are released there that they're not expecting to be a box office blockbuster level. So they'll typically release them in hopes to at least make their money back. Now, this one was released, obviously, towards the middle of April for varying reasons, but uh, it premiered at number one, and unfortunately, it only stayed at number one for one week. It stayed in the top 10 for a uh, little under two months, and actually, on its eighth week of release, it was bumped out of the top 10. But at number one on the box office that weekend, as obviously I said, is 42, at number two, was Scary Movie 5. We all remember that one, right? No? Nobody does? Nobody? Good. Good. Amazing that it premiered at number two. But it made $14 million. At number three was the animated film The Crudes. Number four was G.I. Joe Retaliation. That was the sequel with The Rock. Number five was the Evil Dead remake. And I've got to say number six was the 20-year release of Jurassic Park. It pulled in $8.8 .8 million that weekend. <laughs> Sorry, that, that, that tickled my funny bone there. Continue, Josh. Dan, what was funny about that line? I don't know. I wasn't laughing, obviously. Yeah, I did. It was, Tom he, confuses me. Well, he's, Anywho. He, so, he was uh, concussed. So. Yes. <laughs> But uh, other notables in the box office was at number eight, Oz the Great and Powerful, the attempted reboot of the uh, Wizard of Oz franchise. Jack the Giant Slayer, another failed reboot of the that Disney was trying to throw on us. The Life of Pi at number 21, grossing 237000 Um, What else? There's really not a lot in the box office. I'm scrolling and looking. The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey at number 57 on its 18th week of release. Ooh. Yeah. Olympus Has Fallen was at number seven. But uh, beyond that, there really wasn't a lot. All of the recognizable films are like in the top 10. Yeah. Now, it, it ran through uh, the weekend of July 19th. 42, on its 15th week of release, was at number 50 in the box office. If that couldn't be more confusing, I don't know what could be. I could say the, how much it made. It made $33,316 that weekend. But at number one that weekend was The Conjuring, which was the horror film that spawned a franchise. Yeah, there's really not much going on in the box office during that time. No. It, uh, well, April yeah. is a pretty slow month for movies. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, there were a few films in there that I've... I've I mean, the like like their Evil Dead remake that were fine, but yeah, nothing that just really stands out. Oof, another lousy weekend at the box office. Yeah, and that was the summer where Star Trek Into Darkness was released, Man of Steel, and the one that everybody remembers, the Johnny Depp classic, The Lone Ranger. Oh, yes, that, that classic. You yes. know, yes. Man of Steel is meh. 
Star Trek Into Darkness is disappointing, especially when you get to the third act. But the Lone Ranger was bad from start to finish. <laughs> you know, it's like, wow. Johnny. Yeah, they were trying to recapture the uh, Pirates of the Caribbean uh, feel. Uh, I mean, yeah. Johnny Depp did beat Superman again, but this time not in a good way. No, no. Yeah. I think they have master classes on how not to make a film based around that movie. Yeah. yeah. Yes. God, if we ever get to that one, we, we're going to yeah. have some discussions on it. But uh, the last thing I'm going to say is that number six was Pacific Rim. That's Tom's favorite movie. Anywho. So now, uh, Tom, onto the meta. Yes. Oh, that. Ugh. How could they screw up giant robots? I'll never understand. But they really didn't. But go ahead. <laughs> We'll have discussions about that if we ever get to that film. But for now, we'll talk about this film, 42, tagline. In a game divided by color, he made us see greatness. Summary. In 1947, Jackie Robinson, played by Chadwick Boseman, becomes the first African-American to play in Major League Baseball when he is signed by the Brooklyn Dodgers and faces considerable racism in the process general info um this of course is based on the story of jackie robinson the first black athlete to play major league baseball in the 20th century um the title coming from his jersey number 42 it's this is dram uh, dramatization not based on any specific biography or book it's mostly taken i think just from anecdotes what have you uh obviously some liberties taken with events here and there which we will probably discuss in um trivia and such this is not a new story robinson has been dramatized in film and television for decades now heck there was a documentary made in the 1950s that starred jackie robinson as himself so again not a new story but how it compares to other past works we'll find out this movie again like the last one was written and directed by brian helgeland brian wrote a knight's tale the movie we saw before he's done mostly dramas um la confidential Payback, Man on Fire. In terms of directing, he also did, of course, A Knight's Tale, but still not much more after that. The only film he did before uh, this film was a schlock film called The Order, uh, which starred pretty much uh, almost everyone from A Knight's Tale. So he's still coming in with not a lot of directing experience but the, the writing's probably going to be solid. He knows what he's doing there. In terms of production, uh, there are too many people to mention here. There are like nine people that back this film. And all of them range from like Watchmen to Moneyball to Ted. It's too varied to really get a feel for the type of movie this will be based on the people who are backing it. Uh, the cast right here, like before, we got some talented up-and-comers and reliable middle-grounders. Harrison Ford being the biggest name on this list. Uh, we'll I'll get into him in a bit. Chadwick Boseman plays Jackie Robinson, the hero. Um, he's known for dramatic roles before this. We know him as T'Challa from Black Panther. Uh, before this film, he did mostly television dramas, ER, Justified, and Fringe. This was his third film after The Kill Hole and The Express. But his career picked up fast after this. From here on up, it was just... It was just stars for this guy. He was very committed to this role, too, which I'm sure Nigel will get into in his trivia. Playing Rachel Robinson, Jackie Robinson's wife, is Nicole Bahari, the love interest type. Also a dramatic actress, best known for television roles before this, specifically Sleepy Hollow. She was also in The Express with Chadwick Boseman. Harrison Ford, as I said, the biggest name here, playing Branch Rickey. The guy who recruits Robinson to the Dodgers. I mean, he's best known as Han Solo, Indiana Jones, Jack Ryan, with roles from Star Wars to Blade Runner to Indiana Jones. He's the big name, the star that kind of draws people in. It's like you don't know everyone else, but at least you recognize his name. And finally, rounding it out are John C. McGinley and Alan Tudyk. McGinley plays Red Barber, the announcer. I guess he has a lot of role in this. 
you know, John C. is a character actor. We know him as Dr. Cox from Scrubs, but he's been in everything from Office Space to Point Break. Occasionally, he'll play a character, a comic character, but everyone knows him as a jackass. It's what he's good for. So he's most likely going to be playing, well, a jackass sports newscaster. And Tujik, as we said before, is a character actor, mostly comedies, best known as Wash from Firefly and the snarky robot K250 from Rogue One. K2SO. Uh, oh, excuse me. K2SO from <laughs> Rogue One. I just wanted to make sure you were paying attention, Josh. Sure you were. But this one's going to be a bit of a change in his style. He's playing, I mean, as a character actor, he does all types of roles. He mostly does comedy. This one, he's playing an asshole, a very racist asshole. So it's going to be interesting to see him in this one. Uh, Music is by Mark Isham, who's been doing this since 1983, starting with the Times of Harvey Milk documentary, which I bring up because I had to watch that one in film school. Uh, He's a workman composer. He's done everything from schlocky movies to Oscar bait, A River Runs Through It, Blade, Varsity Blues, Made in America. So you can't really get a feel for what kind of music we're into, except it's going to be it's going to be pretty decent at that behind the scenes there's not a lot of drama that went into this um there are a few things here and there and none of them are really uh, negatives nothing that really hampered the production but no accolades from this film the consensus was that this film was competent but unexceptional so in summary this is a historical drama written by a pro but directed by an inconsistent amateur with consistent talent and under constant care by people who wanted to make sure it got done right. So I will now turn it over to Nigel to give us a little more trivia on what into making this film and everything else about it. Okay, well, um, as we mentioned before, um, I do have a few things. Yes, uh, Chadwick Boseman, he didn't get in a fight necessarily with his stunt double. He refused to let the filmmakers use the stuntman for the baseball scenes. Bozeman, in order to prepare for the role, spent hours and hours studying Jackie Robinson's game film and wanted to do everything he could to mimic Jackie Robinson's movements on screens, from the way he swung the bat to the way he ran bases to the way he slid into bases. Like He studied game film to perfectly, or as perfect as he could, be Jackie Robinson. And he just didn't want the stunt double to be on film doing the baseball scenes because he was like, man, I put in all this work. I want him to look like Jackie Robinson, but that didn't really cause that much friction. It was just kind of a new actor kind of putting his foot down on a few things. And the director kind of being like, who the hell does this guy think he is? But yeah, that's, that was what was going on with him in the stunt double. This movie describes Jackie Robinson as the first black major league baseball player in the modern era. He was not actually the first African-American baseball player. He was the first in the 20th century, which is what they consider to be baseball's modern era. Um, The first African-American baseball player was actually Moses Fleetwood Walker on the Toledo Blue Stockings in 1884. And he was followed shortly thereafter by his brother, Weldy uh, Weldy Walker. That's a hard name to say. Evidence also suggests that another player named William White may have... uh, played even earlier than those two. But uh, the 19th century baseball is not considered the modern era because some of the rules were different. So Jackie Robinson is considered the first African-American player to play for baseball in the modern era. And there was a um, major leagues uh, for black players at the time. It was called the Negro Leagues. There's been a lot of arguments, a lot, of, rightfully so, a lot of arguments and a lot of uh, movement uh, within baseball to except the records that were set by Negro League players into Major League Baseball records because they do have their own wing of the Baseball Hall of Fame, but their records are separate. So actually, Jackie Robinson's records in the Negro Leagues are not the same as his records in Major League Baseball. Like his at-bats, his batting average, his home runs hit, doubles hit, you know, all that stuff. He has separate records for when he played in the Negro Leagues, he hit this many home runs, and when he played in Major League Baseball, he hit this many home runs. They don't combine the two. And, and I can see why I can see why they separate the records, but I can also see why they want them combined because so not every Negro League player 
eventually made it to the major leagues. You know, because lots of things happened that eventually dissolved the Negro Leagues. They started integrating Major League Baseball, uh, so the Negro Leagues weren't as big. And then World War II also kind of dissolved the Negro Leagues as well, because a lot of them went to go fight World War II, and there weren't enough players for the Major League teams, let alone the Negro Leagues, or the other minor league teams. I mean, there's a movie about it called um, A League of Their Own. So, But a lot of things ended up dissolving the Negro Leagues, and not every Negro League player got to go play for major league baseball. So there's been a movement to have their records integrated into the major leagues. Cause it's not their fault. They had to play in a league that was segregated at the time. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 It's, it's not like they were the, the minor leagues. And yeah. It's not like, a minor league. Yeah. They were not, they were professional players. Yes. They didn't make as much as white players in major league baseball. And yes, they, I don't think there was as many teams, but still uh, I, I can make a whole thing about that. Uh, it's actually kind of an interesting study. Anyways, going back to some of the other trivia, Alan Tudjik uh, claims that he and Chadwick Boseman deliberately avoided fraternizing while filming their scenes together to better convey animosity between Jackie Robinson and Ben Chapman. But they're actually friends in real life, or they were friends in real life. Um, and uh, they didn't want their natural friendship to sh ever show up on screen. So they purposefully stayed away from each other during filming. And two last bits of trivia I have is this film actually broke the record for highest box office opening weekend by a baseball movie. The previous record was the bench warmers in 2016. Really? Yes. The bench warmers. Yeah. I never heard <laughs> really? that's what said it before. Yeah. I thought, you know, I was thinking opening box office opening weekend by a baseball movie. Hmm. Is it a league of their own? Is it angels in the outfield? Is it, uh, the natural? Is it, uh, field of dreams? No, it's the bench warmers. Okay. Okay. I would have got that trivia question wrong. Um, and the last bit of trivia I have is that this movie opened up on April 12th, three days before actual Jackie Robinson Day. Uh, Jackie Robinson Day is April 15th in Major League Baseball every year. During that day, all Major League Baseball players were Jackie Robinson's number of 42. In 1997, Major League Baseball honored Jackie Robinson by making his jersey number, number 42, the first uniform number to be universally retired across the sport. In 1997, any player wearing number 42 at the time could continue to wear it until they retired. But now no one wears 42 because all those players are out of out of the league now. So nobody wears 42 except on Jackie Robinson Day. And yes, if you actually go to any Major League Baseball park in America where they have their ring of honor, where they have their, their jersey numbers retired, all of them have a 42 on there. No so, fooling. Mm -hmm. That's actually kind of cool. So that's all I got for trivia. I didn't have much. Uh, most of the trivia I found wasn't necessarily about the movie, but it was also like it was about Jackie Robinson and the, the different leagues of Major League Baseball and stuff like that. So um, mm -hmm. I'm kind of looking forward to it. And incidentally, to add to your trivia while I was looking up, I wasn't sure if you were going to say this or not, but I guess uh, Jackie Robinson's wife worked very closely with this film, too. And she kept a very close eye on things, made sure things stayed to a uh, kind of true to the character and mm -hmm. within Hollywood reason to the events. So the, um, uh, I don't know if it was his wife, his daughter. I read that his daughter, Sharon. OK, uh, she because his daughter is still alive, felt the movie capture or felt like Chadwick Boseman, especially truly captured the spirit of her father. OK, so maybe it was his fault, the, the daughter, not uh, the wife. Yeah, so. and Sharon actually appeared on um, the uh, ABC special, A Tribute for a King, that aired to honor Chadwick when he died last year from colon cancer. I've definitely learned something, Nigel. Well, so what are your expectations then, Tom? <sighs> well, I mean, it's it's good to know that, you know, Jackie Robinson's family was close to this film and kind of kept it on the rails. And knowing Chadwick Boseman, it's... You're going to get some solid performances from all of these people. I don't know what to expect from this film. I, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. But I've seen a few films where it's like, okay, I recognize this. It's got some people I've never heard of, but they seem like talented actors around them. But it just turned out to be an absolute thud. Let's not kid ourselves. We've had several films on this journey where it's like, Okay, I recognize one or two people. The rest, they seem familiar enough. And at this time they made this, it was fun. I mean, they were up and comers with potential, but the rest of the film around them wasn't really the best. The only reason Knight's Tale worked is because they knew they were never going to get it right. So they just got it wrong with style. So here we have a film like Knight's Tale, written and directed by the same guy that did Knight's Tale, where you have like one or two people you know about 
Uh, the rest are kind of up and starring an up and comer, but it's might not exactly make the most exciting film. That's what I'm worried about here. I don't think I'll hate the film, but I don't know if it's going to be good. But again, I've been wrong before about these things. Uh, but Nigel, what about you? Um, I'm, I'm hopeful that this is going to be a good movie. Uh, it's got a lot of good actors in it. I, and I hear good things about it. I've also heard middling things about it. My (laughs) hesitation comes from our track record of going into a movie where neither of us have seen it. And this is the first time it's fallen on a destination film. This is the first destination film that we've had where all three of us haven't seen this film. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm a little worried just based on our track record that this is going to be a, Oh boy, (laughs) you know, but I've heard good things about this film. Um, My mom was actually, and my, my stepdad was actually real excited when I told him that this is the film we were doing for our destination. They both love this movie. And um, my stepdad played minor league baseball and he's very critical of baseball movies and he loved this film. So, Hmm. um, so I'm, I'm hopeful for that. Uh, Or at least that gives me some hope. Um, But I, I don't know. I like Chadwick Boseman. Harrison Ford's a great actor. Um, Alan Tudjik's a great actor. You know, I, I, like I said, looking up and down the IMDb list, I'm like, this on paper should look like a good movie. But, um, I thought that I've thought that about some films on here before, but I, I think I, I would like to say my expectations is I'm cautiously optimistic, but I, I, th- I think at the end of the day, I'm going to be, I'm going to enjoy the film. Um, what about you, Josh? I think I'm in the same room as you. I have heard nothing about this film. It's like one film that Chadwick Boseman was in that everybody seems to enjoy. I've, most people I was introduced to Chadwick Boseman through, uh, obviously gods of Egypt. Cause um, he did such a good job in that movie. Well, he was so good in that historical documentary that they had to cast him for this one. <laughs> but <laughs> no, obviously I, I learned, I, I was introduced to Chadwick Boseman through uh, Captain America Civil War and his reoccurring roles in the MCU. I think he's a great actor. I still can't go on on how much I enjoyed his uh, acting in 21 Bridges. That is a movie I hope we can get to. Hint, hint for both of you for next week. But uh, I, I I think he's a great actor. Uh, definitely taken before his time. I don't know about this movie, though. I don't know. And nobody immediate to me has seen it. You guys obviously haven't. And uh, you're the ones I talk to the most about movies. So I I would have to say that I'm cautiously optimistic like you, Dan. I mean, it's got a great cast in it. I don't think any of these actors or actresses that I'm immediately aware of, I've seen in a truly terrible performance because there was only what three Indiana Jones films. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But even even in Alan Tudjik's worst roles, he's still amazing. So he's definitely not the dark spot in those movies. Mm-mm-mm. But uh, overall, those that's really all I've got. I'm cautiously optimistic. I'm looking forward to the movie. I like sports movies. Don't like sports, but I love a good sports movie. Th- th- those are my expectations. But uh, Dan, you did say something during yours that I wanted to comment on. About totally forgot what you said, though. The fact that our track record for watching movies yes, that, that was it. That I've was never it. seen is not great. Yeah, I was gonna like say like the only movies that we've seen that we haven't that we actually enjoyed was Midnight Special. We didn't like Swing Vote. I think we did Midnight Special is the only one that all three of us enjoyed. The rest of them mm-hmm. at best were meh. Yeah, and have been- I think the only one that had a meh rating by the three of us was uh, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. Yeah, that was yeah. meh, and so was that that Mark Hamill one, the Slipstream. Slipstream. Like Slipstream. we thought that one was kind of meh. Like it was, it felt more like a TV movie or whatever. But like. Like most of them yeah. have been like, oh no, <laughs> oh, oh no. yeah, Swashbuckler, was, Greatest, yeah, Dead, Dead Calm. Calm, other movies Tom picked. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a terrible track record. Yeah, well, that's why you go six months before you get to pick lists. <laughs> this is accurate. I can't argue <laughs> this. I want to, but you're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes when you experiment. You get the herp. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> it's like, all right, well, uh, do you guys have anything else to say about the um, expectation wise? No, uh, I think I said all I'm going to, like, all I could say about it, I should say. Yep. Anything right. more would just be me uh, liking the sound of my own voice. Yeah. Nigel, do you want to do the segue to the uh, next part, air quotes? 
Well, speaking that of- we're going to dread because a certain somebody has to do it. Oh, for God's sake. Stop reminding me that I lost quiz last week. Anyways, mm-hmm. Tom's doing yeah. quiz this week. Yay. It's speaking of liking the sound of my own voice. Yay. Oh, it's good to be in this seat again. This is your standard Tom quiz here. I've scoured IMDB for the choicest of choice user reviews about this film. One through ten stars. I will be giving you each five reviews. One sentence from each or the title of the review. And you have to guess how many stars, one through ten, they gave this movie. Person who gets closest without going over gets a point. Those that get it exactly get two points. And the person with the most points after five questions uh, wins. And the prize for winning is to do the tournament next time. Excuse me, quiz next time. So are there any questions before I start asking my questions? Uh, no. You know, Dan, we are on a uh, destination film. Why didn't we have Rob do this again? That we could have forgot Tom was up. Oh, you know what? Um, let's pin that for the next destination. Let's just see if Rob wants to do quiz on every destination film. Yeah, do I'm down win. for that. Especially or every time Tom, Tom does it. Or every time Tom wins, it automatically goes to Rob. Yeah. That's Anywho, good. go ahead, Tom. You were saying? That's now two-thirds I, vote, so. Now I don't know who not to give this quiz first to. All right. Um. Well, keeping to tradition, Josh, I'm going to ask Dan the first question. <laughs> to nobody's surprise. <laughs> so, Nigel, this review comes from... Lotus Chief, whose title of the review is Another Whitewashed Effort That Was Supposed to Be About an African American Legend. Uh, jeez. Um, two star review. Josh? Uh, I want to say one. You know what? Fuck it. One star review. And Josh is right on the money. That is a one star review. The rest of the review is just so much better than that. Oof. He had some words to say about this film. But, Clearly. Yeah, so Josh, that means the next question goes to you. You're going to love this one. This review comes from zk one Dog, who says, The only reason I can't give this film a full five stars? Simplicity. I hate Tom. I know. It's like makes me wonder, is it a five out of five that he's talking, or is it a five out of ten? So it's like, is it a five star? Is it a ten star review? So if you can't give it a so, or do I say four, thinking that he meant a five, or do I say nine or eight? I'm gonna say eight. Eight, eight out of ten. I'm gonna say that there was told there would be no math on this podcast, except for counting to six. Um, the reason why I can't give this a full five stars is because blah 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 blah. blah. Uh, I'm gonna say he gave it a four star. Josh, again, right on the money. That is an eight-star review. Holy shit. Eight. This game now. (laughs) (laughs) Oof, I called that right. (laughs) You can still come back, Nigel. You've got three questions left. If you get both on the money, if two on the money and one for the show, you can uh, probably win this. But this one goes to you. This one comes from DRQ Shadow Reviews. The title of their review is, In Baseball Terms, This Would Be an Infield Single. Five-star review. Josh. Infield Single. That's when they make a touchdown to only one uh, goal, right? Absolutely. Par for the course for your sports analogies. (laughs) Say it one more time. In Baseball Terms... This would be an infield single. This is the title of the title of the review. I want to go six out of ten. And Nigel said five. Mm-hmm. Josh is just hitting it right on the money. That is a six star. Oh no! Nice. Damn! Hell! Damn, Josh! Well, he's gonna Damn, win now. A perfect game. He's, yeah, he's gonna win now. But uh, let's do the last question, so maybe I don't get shut out. But I'm probably gonna get. That shut was out. only the third question, too. Yeah. yeah. So we've got two more to go. Oof. Ooh, is Josh gonna hit a no hitter? Oof. <laughs> Oof. Oof. Shit. <laughs> okay. So this is um. Okay, this one goes to Josh. So Josh, this one comes from Cole Jam Twenty One, who said the movie ended. 
And I still know zero about Robinson. Movie ended, and I still know zero about Robinson. <sighs> I'm gonna go three out of ten. Mm, Nigel? I'm gonna say f- two out of ten. On the dollar, Dan! Nice! Oh, nice! That I'm not gonna get two. shut out! Woohoo! I broke up the no hitter in the eighth <laughs> inning! Damn! <laughs> Nicely done! <sighs> Good job, Dan! I was oh. psychically sending it to you, too. Like, please don't try to prices right them. Go one lower! Yes! Okay! Dan is on the board with two points. Damn, we've all hit it on the money tonight, though. Yes. That's that's incredible. <laughs> but this is the final one. So, Josh, I believe this one goes to you. This review comes from John 33 who said, I didn't like the racism in this movie. <laughs> Actually, it goes to Dan. Oh, is it Dan's? That's right, it is. Nigel, yeah, you get this one. I didn't like the racism in this movie. But the movie's about a time and... Never mind. Okay. Um... (laughs) Uh, I didn't think the racism in this movie. I'm gonna say three out of ten. Josh? Um, I'm gonna go four out of ten. And Josh gets it. Not on the money, though, because that is a ten-star review. Ah... I didn't like the racism in this movie, in a movie about racism. Okay. Yeah. Or over- so, overcoming, seven to two. overcoming racism. Okay. Yeah, seven to two, Josh wins. It wasn't a shutout, though, Nigel. Yeah, which is good. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. There, some people had a lot of things to say. That one star was the only one star review, though. Everything else, I mean, there were like two or three two stars, two or three three stars. Not a lot of low scores in this one. So that's that's promising. Nice. So I get to do the quiz for the first movie on our third journey for season two. Yes, indeedy peedy, Josh. So whatever that first movie turns out to be. Hey, you want to know what it is? What's that, Josh? Tom, play the music. Welcome back to another home run stealing episode of The Fire Pit. I am, as always, your interspersal host, editor, and old-timey baseball commentator, Tom. And yes, sir, this team's looking to slap more back than bacon. But if they keep on storming through this dust bowl, they're liable to wake the Kaiser. I have no idea what I just said. But thank you for storming the bases with us here at the Fire Pit. We finally reached home plate, Chadwick Boseman's 42, as the Fire Pit strikes out to the end of this latest journey. The team certainly took the long way around the bases, but whoo, what a game it's been. But speaking of games, let's see how the team's handling the loss of this latest game of the intramural podcast sports type tournament. We're here at the Fire Pit locker room for the post game press conference. Just waiting on the podcast to Oh, and here they come! I'm the one who doesn't have a concussion. I should talk. Yeah, but it wasn't me who blew the strike, so I should talk. Yeah, but I was the one in the front, so I should be the one that. <laughs> you know what? I'll just do it. Look. Hi! Thank you, everyone, for joining. We'll be fielding some questions now. Um, uh, yes, yes, you you in the back. Hello, yes, I'm Joan Walanowski from City News. Uh, you know you can have clothes on right now, right? Irrelevant. Next question. Yes, I'm Steve Adrian Smalls from Rob's Custom PC Press Group. Would it be fair to attribute your astonishing loss to flagrant incompetence? Look, they just prepared better than we did, okay? I mean, it, it, hats off to them. It was a tough game. It was hard fought. A lot of bullshit with the Illuminati stuff, but, <laughs> you know. I mean, you- no, the, and there were also three of us against a full baseball roster. I'd like to kindly remind everyone here of that. Just three people, full baseball roster. Can we get a less stupid question now? Yes, you in the front. Hi, I'm Josh from the Fire Pit Podcast. So do you think Josh's decision to fix his pitching arm was an oversight? Well, honestly, thank you for the question, but uh, I think it's more of an overhand, if you know what I'm saying. Oh, Josh, such wit and charm. Thank you for that answer. That was just amazing. You can't answer your own questions, Josh. Think, McFly, think. Why am I not wearing pants? 
Hello, I'm Real Reporter from Real Newspaper. Coach, we'd like to get your thoughts on this tournament as a whole. Do you feel that getting to the finals only to lose means a change of overall strategy is in order? Or do you think you'll keep the same playbook in the next year's tournament? Honestly, I didn't know I was their coach until now. I mean, I've been on the payroll for six weeks, but this is the first time I've ever done anything for the team. Yeah, look, they played a tough game, and wait, we don't have a payroll. Well, I mean, those two guys over there gave me this card and said this is my payment. Yep. Let me see mm-hmm. that. Nope, just ignore it. Eight, Tom, six, just seven, Tom, five, three, oh. This it. is my credit card. Give me that. Give me that. Get, get, get out of here. You two, we're going to talk. Get out of here. All right, well, I'm getting paid anyway. <laughs> So, Josh, you said some pretty hateful language on the field today. What do you say to the children listening at home? That kids should not be listening to our podcast. The E stands for explicit, not everyone. Or does it sound for entertaining or enduring? Think Pig Fly. Dan, let's hope you have a better answer. Uh, Where's the podcast go from here? How will you recover from this irreparable shame? Uh, there's no shame in losing to a better opponent. And this was just a side intramural thing. Our podcast isn't really going to suffer because we've lost today. Oh, believe me, after my report, it will. You lost to a 12-year-old in a full body cast. You guys are terrible. So, Tom, how did it feel losing a game? Because Dan and Josh are, oh, how do I put this lightly? Morons. Oh, Joan, that's a Tuesday for me anymore. I'm personally, I'm going to address the credit card. I'm more upset that they use my credit card to pay that hack coach. Oh, that's enough questions for the day, I think. We're going to hit the showers and the bricks and such, get back on the field next week and, uh, you know, get back at it. So, uh, about my pay. Yeah, don't worry, dude. We got you. Don't worry about it. He's got to sleep sometime. Okay. I'm right here. I heard the whole thing. Shh. Go to sleep. Hello. <laughs> oh, that Josh. But if you have ways to help us sleep soundly, or if you want to sound off on some movie recommendations, or if you have some sound products which you'd pay to advertise, then feel free to email us at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. That's curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Just be sure to put fire pit in the subject line, as well as why you're emailing us, whether it's for an advertisement, an advisement, an admonishment, or any additions to our movie destination lists and slide it our way from there we'll read it call it back from the mound send it to the dugout put it on the bus back to the minor leagues and never respond it just wasn't ready for the big time after all but that email again is curtain call entertainment inc at gmail.com capital c capital c capital e capital i at gmail.com well, that kicking of the tin is telling me to dump the rum and get lanky. I'll let you get back to the episode, slugger. Thank you all for listening, and as always, good luck. Is this some kind of code? Did I just inadvertently give away the Normandy invasion? No wonder nobody talks old-timey anymore, dear lord. <laughs> And now to check on the team to see how they're enjoying their movie. All right, I'm going to screw this up and try to turn on subtitles. Oh, here come our first technical difficulties. And... Oh, shit, it's still playing. Oh, my God, it worked. For me. Uh, I see Dan is still at 129, though. Okay, I think these subtitles are way off. They're talking about radioactive balls. (laughs) Yeah, I don't think they're the subtitles for this film. Josh! (laughs) Wakanda forever! (laughs) Sorry, you know what's going to happen. Echo a curse with a curse, and I'll hear only yours. That's true, still. Okay, so he said he's going to give Jackie Robinson $600 a month. In 1947, that's almost $7,200 a month. Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's not bad. Let me put that in historical context. A black man's salary in 1947 at $7,200 a month. Mm-hmm. And this was in the age when... It was a kind of a gentleman's rule where a baseball player or anyone in sports was not supposed to make more than the president of the United States. So that's still probably pretty high up there in terms mm-hmm. of baseball salary. Yeah, that's a hell of a risk for that guy. Hats off to him. 
He's so weird when he's not talking in his uh, T'Challa accent. I was going to say, it's so weird they're walking around without masks. Yeah. <laughs> this well, pandemic's been going on too long. They're supposed to be the Dodgers. Shouldn't they have more of a Dodger sound? Well, they're dodging the responsibility here. Uh... Aren't you supposed to be playing Chicago? We've been weighed. We've been measured. <laughs> and we haven't been found wanting. See how I connected last week's episode to this one. Stop it. Boom! Oh, there no. it is. Foo-wee. And that is why he's king of Wakanda. <laughs> hey, mm-hmm. that's the uh, doctor from Grey's Anatomy. It is. It is! He's the only moderately decent actor on that show. Yeah, I said it! Can't sign now, boys. I'm indisposed. <laughs> but I just catch up with you later. <laughs> See how he dodged that? <laughs> oh no! How to oh turn no! Off Josh's microphone. <laughs> That's gonna be the new thing. Oh! Oh, thank you for the idea, Tom. <laughs> oh no! And that boy was Albert Einstein. Wait, wasn't Albert <laughs> Einstein a white Jew? Played by Chadwick Boseman. Oh, right. Because let's be honest, if Chadwick Boseman was cast to play Albert Einstein in an Albert Einstein biopic, he would nail the shit out of that. Well, I'd question it now because he's dead, but yeah. More Simonis like this. Besides, I got a hardware store back home. Screw your hardware store. Shouldn't be that hard. He has a hardware store. Plenty of screws. Oh, you laugh at Josh's dodging thing, but I give you screws. Eh, screw you. Oh, shit, good. Thank God. Oh, I was so worried. Had me going there for a moment, woman. We're a little hard on Robinson. We treat him the same way we treat Hank Greenberg, except we call him a instead of a Whenever we play exhibitions with the Yankees, we call Joe DiMaggio the All right? They laugh about it. No, you laugh about it. <laughs> yeah. I was like, see, we're fine. We're racist to everyone who's different. Yeah. That means it's okay. We don't discriminate on our racism. So, uh, you Robinson? What tipped you off? <laughs> it's good to know managers from Philadelphia are still assholes and have to always be assholes in history. Oh yeah, that's Alan Tedzik's character. He's he is a complete asshole in this movie. Mm-hmm. That's what what Tom Tom said. But yes, go Alan Tedzik. Come on, K two S five O. Oh man, dude, you can't. According do that. to what I was reading, Alan Tudjik was incredibly uncomfortable reading some of these lines. Dude, you give me the script for this, you're like, I'm gonna have to decline. Yeah, I'm not saying this. No, it's your character. It's not actually you. Yeah, that's why Tudjik stayed away from Chadwick for so long. I, could, I wouldn't be able to look him in the eye if you had me reading that shit. Cut. I'm so sorry, Chadwick. I'm so sorry. I don't mean to say these things. Love the guy drinking a beer in the background. Dude, shower beer is best beer. (laughs) Oh! Oh! Oh. Fucking hell. That's why they wear helmets nowadays. Yep. (laughs) Okay, hold on. Wakanda was forever. (laughs) (laughs) Thought I was playing football. (laughs) Um, um, I want to buy a Subaru. (laughs) (laughs) Wakanda forever. (laughs) Joking aside, that would have hurt like a bitch. Oh my Fuck god. Right. Which one is Dodger? Why are you climbing on tonight? Time! Oh, wait, time out. Hold on. He's got to take a nap. Hey, which one is it? <laughs> god. Alan Tudjik is such a good actor. I, I hate him right now. <laughs> oh! For someone, I never, it's like, this is like one of those moments when you want to watch a professional wrestling and I didn't think someone could be a heel. I'm like, oh, he's a good heel. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Jesus God. Whoo. Got that for him, Master Mueller, but he's got something for you. Zip. Not again. <laughs> I'm assuming they're ending here because they did not win the World Series. That's exactly what I was thinking. They didn't win the World Series. The end. God. It's okay. One day you're going to be king of Wakanda and he's going to get impaled by a reaver. <laughs> and now, back to the episode. Woo! 
About time we saw a really good film on this journey. Oh my God, this was worth it. Oh my Lord. Yeah, I know, right? That was, that was really good. Yeah. Yeah. It was. Also, I dared, I, I'm going to go, before we go into our final thoughts, I'm going to say that was definitely the best movie we've ever seen that all three of us have not seen. Yes, yes. definitely. Bar none. Yes. Oh my God. I won't, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm anxious to get into my final thoughts. Yeah, on this I film. am I'm too. Chomping. I'm anxious. I'm anxious to talk about this film, but I do believe Josh has the lead-off hit tonight. So, Josh, you go first. Well, I, I gotta say, this movie is. Um, oh man, this was just so good. From the beginning, they played it out really awesome. I'm just like, first thing I said after this movie was finished was, "This is the guy who directed Knight's Tale," because <laughs> it's like those movies are just so different i don't know it's just it was really really good i mean it's like um harrison ford's character said uh he really sympathized with jackie robinson and chadwick boseman just nailed it out of the park to turn a phrase but i was saying earlier that i I, during these movies especially when we're watching them sometimes it's hard for me to really absorb the movie especially if i haven't seen it Mm -hmm. because you know i'm i'm listening to you guys talk and i'm not trying to say negative thing about that you know that's half the fun of this podcast is bullshitting while we're watching a movie, trying to find something I can turn into a shitty pun just to hear you guys groan. But this movie is just like, I found myself very difficult doing that because it's like, I was trying to pay attention. I think more times than any other movie in the past. Uh, well, the, you guys were talking. I was like, shh, important part. I need to listen. <laughs> I didn't say the latter half, but I did shush them a few times. Right guys. Yes. Not that there was many times to shush us. This is a this is no. going to be a short watch session. Yeah, because I don't think there was a lot to say, and very. I know I made fewer comments on average because I was really into the movie. I'm going to have to watch this movie again, just so I can really absorb it. This was a great movie. I just I'll have more to bounce off you guys, but you know, before I start rambling on, I'm just going to go ahead and pass things on to you, Dan. I'm just going to say, as I said before, this is definitely the best movie that we've ever seen that we've all three of us hadn't seen before. Phenomenal film. The acting was spectacular. I'm going to touch on Alan Tudjik's acting for a moment. Um, I'm going to use another professional wrestling reference. For years in the 90s, Hulk Hogan was a babyface, and no one ever thought he could be a heel. And then he became a despicable heel that everyone hated and changed his career. That's how I feel about Alan Tudjik in this movie. He's always played a likable loser in everything I've ever seen him in. And in this movie, I wanted to hit him with a (laughs) ball bat so badly. I'm sitting there like watching this going, someone cancel Alan Tudjik, forgetting that he's playing a character and he's not really this racist shitbag in real life. Phenomenal work and i can i can believe the stories when he said that he was uncomfortable reading some of those lines i would be uncomfortable reading some of those lines i think any right-minded person would be very uncomfortable reading some of those lines um even if you're just playing a character even if you don't actually mean any of the words that you're saying and are coming out of your mouth but yeah he was so good in this movie but he wasn't the only one everyone was great in this movie even the, the actors who had small bit parts i thought christopher maloney was really good as their first manager um, he had that that scene in the locker room or the kitchen or whatever late at night when he was telling the other act or the not the actors the other ball players, hey Jackie Robinson's coming whether you like him or not he's going to be on this team whether you like him or not he's here to play ball, and I really enjoyed that scene because he was shouting at the top of his lungs but then he dropped it to a really intense whisper and he had the same level of intensity that you know I, I really enjoyed. Um, and Harrison Ford was so good in this. Just, I, I don't know. I could go, I could literally list every actor that's listed on IMDb that was in this film and go on and on and on about how much I love their performances. But damn, this was a good film. This was a fun watch. It was a really good, feel good story. Probably one of the best sports biographics I've ever seen. So oh, yeah, yeah, just easy. really, mm-hmm. really good film. I haven't really enjoyed watching a baseball movie this much for the first time. Like the first time I've ever seen this movie since I watched the league of their own. Um, so I'm going to pass things off to Tom before I start to ramble and then we can start bouncing some things off each other. I'd say this is going to be hard to really talk about because you both have pretty much said everything I've wanted to say and more. So, uh, without echoing too much, I want to personally, um, 
give props to Andre Holland. It's Wendell, Wendell Smith, um, who I left out of my meta, but in retrospect, I should have included him. He, uh, his character, Wendell Smith, was a reporter who followed Jackie Robinson, uh, the supporting voice of history that I expected McGinley to play, not to diminish McGinley's performance as the color commentator, because he was definitely that right amount of you know, turn of the century color commentary to really add authenticity. But Holland uh, was just great. He brought quiet intensity and that contrast also with um, the character of Jackie Robinson as a black reporter who was also on the outside trying to get in, you know, didn't mean to not include him, but Audrey Holland did a magnificent job. Everyone did a great job. This is a film I was hoping we'd get from a lot of the films we saw. Uh, especially the greatest. This is kind of the film I wanted the greatest to be. This film was just the right amount of heavy. It covered the triumphs on the field, properly contrasted against the real struggle, which was the racism of the time and overcoming that, which is what I wanted the greatest to be, but didn't know what to do with itself. This one had a clear vision. The narrative flow was good. It transition of time and place just made mm-hmm. sense. So for the story and the writing and everything else, this was just really good. It was worth all the duds and thuds that we had to get through to get here. And I'm wrapping up my positives. I'm going to be getting into the nitpicks but I think, Jer- agree with me, guys. I think the only real film we enjoyed on this journey was, um, what, uh, A Knight's Tale? Yeah, Knight's Tale and Rudy. We liked Rudy, we all, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we liked right, Rudy, Rudy, and we liked A Knight's Tale. We turned on the, the natural. Uh, we didn't like the greatest. Um, and Wimbledon was terrible. But um, yeah, I would say if we grouped them, like, like a loved would be Rudy and 42, liked would be A Knight's Tale, eh, would have to be The Natural, and just truly loathed would be Wimbledon and uh, Greatest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to agree with that. Rudy, um, I think, was a little too schmaltzy and two-dimensional, which is why I'm putting this film way above Rudy. Much as uh, that was a fun film. This I, one was heavy. That's an argument that I would not... Uh, argue or debate i would say definitely this movie's above rudy i'm just saying that when we watched it and recorded that episode we enjoyed that film and Mm -hmm. i'm just saying we love them i mean i'm not putting them in any particular order they're just grouped together but Mm -hmm. yeah i agree i think honestly i may have liked this movie more than i liked rudy so i'd have to agree with you on that one too Mm -hmm. and if i'm gonna nitpick because if i have to i will the music was the only distracting part just they were po- and agree with me or disagree with me, guys. Um, it felt like the music had to handhold you through like some of the scenes. Like this is a very important scene. Yeah, let's have some wispy, sentimental, sentimental violin. Um, in places where it really didn't need it, there were parts where it was like, yes, this needs that violin, but others like right in the beginning or where the kid is like p- praying, may these people see how good Jackie Robinson plays which was just extra schmaltzy with a extra layer of schmaltz on it. So I think that was the only distracting part that and um, Harrison Ford's attempt at a uh, accent. But <laughs> again, as if I'm really just being an asshole about the film, it didn't diminish it any part. It gave it a, it's still an A film. I love it. Yeah. I'd watch this film again. Mm, awesome. I, I think you're right. And I think the movie really is, uh, Definitely the best movie. I think every movie, it was definitely a uh, back and forth, a volley, if you must, getting to this one. It's like good movie, bad movie, eh, movie. But uh, I, oh, dude, this movie was so good. I just, I can't, I'm definitely going to watch this movie again. I almost like want to bring my kids in to watch it with them. But at the same time, I'm like, Alan Tudjik is in this movie. And I'm like, I don't know if that's the version of Alan Tudjik I want to introduce them to. That's a good point. You make, I mean, <laughs> like you want to start out liking the guy uh, before you introduce him to yeah. our kids. Yeah, because that that was a hell of a heel turn. Like that oh, was just, God. I mean, you know, in fact, he just, just one week ago, we watched him in A Knight's Tale and he was just this, this charming idiot, you know, it's like. Yeah, we loved goes, him there. Yeah, and then he goes into this movie and you're like, oh my God, somebody hit him with a bat. <laughs> Dude, Dan, you were saying how it's like, 
you would feel uncomfortable reading those lines, dude. I was uncomfortable listening oh, yeah, to him yeah. with those lines. Oh my god, I was just like, oh, don't say that. That's bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, it's which is that that's actually a really good message for this film. Is mm. that that kind of language makes us uncomfortable now? Whereas that was yeah. almost the norm. Well, not near, not necessarily the norm. The world was starting to change a little bit. Like when that kid, cause like, you know, they do mention at the end of the movie, he was fired and never managed again. Um, he got in real trouble for the words that he was saying to the press by his boss. And even though his boss was a racist too, like his boss was the one that said, Hey, uh, don't bring your team to Philadelphia with, with that player, with that black player. Cause we're not going to take the field with him or something mm-hmm. like that. Like his boss, but his boss wasn't saying those things to the press and that, no, that doesn't make it right. But, mm-hmm. um, the, uh, but he, his boss had the awareness, the presence of mind to know that attitudes were shifting and saying those kinds of things to anyone with a pen and a pencil. And nowadays, anyone with a tape recorder or a cell phone is not acceptable. Yeah, so, it's like you could be racist. Just don't be racist in front of people. Right. And, and, even, <laughs> and know your audience. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's that's a good message for this movie is that. Alan Tudgick's character, Ben Chapman, he, that was the character he played, Ben Chapman's language and his tirades and that what he said is not acceptable today. And it made us uncomfortable like because we, we don't hear that kind of talk every day. And anyone who listens to this podcast knows, hey, all three of us love a good off-color joke once in a while. And that was making me really like shift in my seat like, dude, stop. Please stop yeah. talking like that. <laughs> like, oh, you know, and the so. shit-eating grin he had, too. Yeah. Oh, my like God. You just wanted to of- walk up. Oh, go ahead. No, you go on. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, yeah, it's like when that dude walked up to him and it's like, yeah, take the baseball bat, break it over his fucking face. I loved you in Firefly, but fuck you in this film. Yeah. <laughs> like a leaf on the wind, this bastard. Yeah. I'm glad the Reavers killed you, you bastard. <laughs> like, oh, my God. <laughs> You know, I was even thinking it would be awesome to get him as a guest star on this one. <laughs> Can you imagine the awkward, awkward uh, silence that would have been? You're like, uh, um, oh, yeah, Alan, like I said, we're gonna have to comment. ask you to leave. Like I said, so I, I, oh, honestly, that's a testament to his acting prowess. Exactly. Yeah, he that's can, the other he thing. Can, he can play a character so convincingly. He disappears and he stops becoming. Alan Tudgic. We don't see Alan Tudgic on the screen anymore. Nope. We see Ben Chapman, racist manager for the Phillies. Son of a bitch. I hope this guy gets his comeuppance in the end. And you know what? He did. He got fired at the end of that season and never managed again. So good. But mm-hmm. <laughs> I always go back to it. I think a good actor can make a good villain even better slash worse. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. I keep going back to Joffrey in uh, Game of Thrones. Oh, God. You hated that guy. Yeah. I always think of um, Jason Isaac who played Lucius Malfoy and he also plays Tavington in the, the Patriot. Like he always plays a oh, bad yeah. guy and oh, he just has such a good villain. And then also uh, the guy who plays Draco Malfoy in the, the oh, Harry yeah. Potter movies. Like he's apparently from what all I read is that he's like one of the nicest people in the world. And you know, he loves his fans and always signs autographs and takes pictures with him. And I don't care. I want to hit him with a chair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, it's like, uh, Wyatt Russell, the guy who played the new Captain America, James Walker, or whatever right. James Walker, or whatever his name is. It's like he wasn't necessarily a villain in Cat or a Falcon and the Winter Soldier, but he played the douchebag asshole so good you wanted to punch him. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I just think mm-hmm. you got to appreciate a good bad guy like that. And yeah, I know he wasn't the main antagonist, or Alan Tudyk wasn't the main antagonist in this film, but oh my god, yeah. he was he so definitely- good. Like I said, when 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 they can play a villain like that, and they just play it so well that you stop seeing the actor and you just start seeing the asshole they're playing, that's mm-hmm. so good. And and you know what? The best movies have a good villain, and I'm really glad Alan Tudyk played a good villain in this film. Yeah, he you know? definitely mm-hmm. stole the show. I mean, of all the performances, and they were some really good ones, including um, Chadwick Boseman's. Yeah, Tudyk just for the ten minutes he was on screen, you just. He, he stole the scene. Well, he stole it. Oh, yeah. So you hated yeah. him so much. Exactly. Because, yeah. like, the other performances in this, like, they said racist things and they said bad things about Jackie Robinson or, or African Americans or whatever. They used racist language, but you never were convinced they were actually racist. Most of them were just like, you just, they're ignorant and they were probably raised that way. And it doesn't make it right. But a lot of them were coming around and they could, you know, they could be taught. 
Um, but Alan uh, Ben Chapman was like, "This racist son of a bitch," <laughs> you know. It's like this yeah. guy. I'm legitimately convinced he's racist. But you know, you go know, uh, pinballing off of the uh, racism and that. You know, one thing I did like that they did show is that one scene where racism is taught, not uh, yes. You know that with the little, the boy, he's like looking at Jackie Robinson running out onto the the uh, the field and everybody around him calling him names and you know shouting out the n word and then he starts doing it too. It's just like I thought that was a really good scene too. Really yeah, but powerful. Then, but then showing- like when what's his name put his arm around Jackie Robinson, yeah. you saw the the boy get physically uncomfortable, not because a white man was putting his arm around a black man, but because he's he's learning that racism is stupid. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So. You know, I, I dealt with racism growing up. I am not yeah. white by any stretch of the definition. So I dealt with it, but I don't think I could have ex- managed it on the level that, uh, you know, Jackie Robinson did, at least the way it was portrayed in this yeah. film. Just the open, the open racism. Like, you know, yeah. yeah I know they, that there's a few dark corners in America that still have that kind of open racism and it's not right. And hopefully one day we'll, we'll get rid of those too. But um, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm glad that men like him came and did what they did. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that I live in that world now. Mm -hmm. And I've hit all my notes team and then some, so highly recommend this film. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Worth, worth getting through some clunkers. Yeah. And just be glad you got to get the highlights of our, uh, fire pit strikes out journey because, uh, we had to endure most of these films, but we got the pleasure of getting to watch this one. Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. very, I'm not going to say rarely quite often I come out of these and I'm like, that was a great episode shit movie, but it was a great episode. I love recording movies or episodes with you guys, mm-hmm. but man, I love watching a good movie, especially for the first time. And man, this was just, this was such a good movie. Mm-hmm. I just, I can't recommend this one enough. If you haven't seen it, watch it. I know I'm going to watch it again. Mm-hmm. Just great movie. Just a fantastic movie. Yeah, tip of the hat to you, Nigel, for picking this as our destination. Well, I think, yeah, I mean, yeah, I think no. he ultimately helped decide it, but it was, was definitely a group effort, too. Yeah, yeah well, I, all I yeah. said was the journey would be ending right around Jackie Robinson Day, so we're, mm-hmm. we're a month away, or a month past it, but still, I mean, you know. Yeah, yeah almost. We started roughly around the time it started with mm-hmm. Jackie Robinson Day. I know, this was, whew. yeah, good call all around, good call. This was a good choice. I'm. This was... Some of the clunkers we went through, you're right. Definitely made it worth it. But I think we're circling the drain here, guys. Well, that's it for tonight's show. As a reminder, you can find us on Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, or wherever fine podcasts are sold. Our regular episodes are Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Please like and subscribe on whatever medium you choose, as we really appreciate it and as it helps us out and helps our podcast grow also please be sure to spread the word about us and uh, review our podcast when you can every thumbs up five star ten star high five smiley face helps to you know spread us out during search metrics and when people look up fire pit on google or wherever we pop up more and more at the top of their feed so if you haven't done it yet go out and do it now yes what josh just said Thank you, Josh. And be sure to join our Discord channel as well. Link in the episode's description on discord.me slash firepit, also at firepit.podbean.com. Um, you'll get notifications of new episodes, and even better, you can g- engage in discussions with other fans of the show. It's been kind of quiet lately, uh, some of our usual Discord users, although I know uh, with um, things kind of sort of slowly returning back to normal, more people are at work again and, and whatnot, so maybe not as busy as it used to be, but... You know, we still love to engage with you guys, especially on whatever the latest episode is and whether it was a good movie, a bad movie, a terrible movie or whatever. Um, but yeah, hop on in. Uh, join the Discord. It's a really fun time. Yeah, I've been uh, busy myself with uh, being on orders. I'm off now, so I will be pinging everybody in Discord. But uh, you can also, if you want to communicate with us via old school methods, via the electronic mail, feel free to shoot us an email at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Same thing that guy at the interspersal segment uh, was telling you about. So we'll happily read any long-winded messages you have or short curt messages. Please be nice. I don't think Tom can take it. But um, also, look us up on Twitter. If you want to tweet us a shorter message, hit us up at at firepitcce. And be sure to follow us on there as well. Again, if you haven't, get on there and do it now. Both are uh, linked in the episode's description. So uh, we look forward to hearing from you. 
And speaking of hearing from, I'd like to shout out Zencaster. Zencaster, the recording platform upon which we are able to put these dulcet words of ours into digital form. And I can use those to edit into this podcast that you're listening. Zencaster, we've used for a few weeks now, a few months, and they have been sensational. They are free and they're not paying us to brag about them, but they're worth bragging about. Zencaster, if you do want to pay us to, you know, sing your praises a little bit more, we won't say no. Also, I want to shout out Sync Lounge for helping us watch this film at the same time from all of our various locations, especially when Josh has been on his orders in whatever location he's been put in. It has come through for us. They both have come through. And for coming through, I also want to shout out two of our Facebook followers, Strutzier and Green, two of the many hundreds of followers who helped spread the word, whether they listen to us religiously, just follow the Facebook page to get updates or what have you. Just want to thank him for helping to keep the fire pits burning. Awesome. And uh, I'd like to shout out uh, Peggy, uh, the OG friend of the channel. Always grateful that she's listening and providing some feedback. Also want to shout out uh, some work friends, Tyler, Anthony, Nick, uh, you guys listening to the show. Really appreciate it. I think I'm safe to say, no, we, we can, we can spread the word at work a little bit more. I'm okay with people listening to it now. It's not like I bash my job every day. So um, yeah, join on in and uh, yeah, keep it going. I would like to shout out, firstly, my wife. Um, she has had to manage the house and my children by herself for the past two weeks, and that's been particularly rough on her because she also got incredibly sick about midway through there. So she has been a trooper, and thank you much for being awesome. Um, I'd also like to shout out my buddy Tim, who sent us our very first fire pit meme. It was uh, Samuel Jackson from Pulp Fiction saying, Say Pathfinder one more damn time. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. It was I will post good. this. I, I will post it in the Discord when this episode is released. But uh, thank you, Tim. I thought that was hilarious, and I definitely shared it with Tom and Dan, and they loved it too. Um, and last but not least, I got to shout out my friend from work, Larry. He has been uh, listening to our episodes, our past episodes. And I was in uh, talking to one of the guys in my office, and he walked in the office, and he's like, so... I listened to your Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles episode last night. And I'm like, oh, God, why would you do that to yourself? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, it was pretty bad. <laughs> so, those, those episodes you really should come with the disclaimer. <laughs> they really should. But thank you for trudging through our episodes. We definitely appreciate your continued listening. And if you haven't listened to our Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles episode, congratulations, don't. <laughs> I love all our kids equally, but some more equally than others. Yeah. yeah. Some if you less. start with Top Gun, nobody will judge you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Top Gun's a good starting point. Yes. But yes. Uh, that's all I've got for shout outs, guys. But again, thank you, Larry. We appreciate it. Doing God's work, Larry. Is there anything else, Nigel? You anything else, guys? Anything else we need to talk about? Any more shout outs? Uh, well, I will say that. Um... That's it for this journey, but I do believe we are going to raid another adventure for our next journey. I guess people are going to have to find out. Oh, really cracking that whip there, Nigel. Oof. Oof. Do we have any idea what we're getting into? I don't know, but it sounds like it's going to be an adventure. I'm going to go get my hat. Mm. Yep. So uh, be sure to tune in next week, and we'll have selection section number nine ready to go. We're going to go and talk about where we're going next and we're going to oh guess you'll just have to listen to the episode yes yep. we'll tell you next week so well, guys get your lists ready it's going to be a good one but until then i've been tom i've been dan and i've been josh thanks for listening this has been a production of curtain call entertainment llc good luck out there well we lost Lesson learned? Probably not. I mean, we never learn our lesson. Wait, Josh, where'd you get that trophy? Not this one? Oh my god, tell me you didn't steal the tournament trophy. Oh, no. Why would you think that? I apparently won a Subaru competition? Which is odd, I, I don't own a Subaru. Do I? No. Do I? Well, I mean, it looks pretty sweet, though. Let's toss it over here. Yeah, here, go. Come <laughs> look out! Oh! Man down!
Tom? Tom? You okay there, buddy? I think we should make Star Wars Episode One a destination film. What do you guys think? <laughs> Finally, Tom is making sense. So stay tuned, audience, for next week on Selection Section Number Nine. Jar Jar Binks needs a tasteful sex scene. Thunk. <laughs> no, he needs to slide it up on scene. Screen. Not including that. You should include that. Definitely not including that. And that's it for tonight's Definitely episode. Be sure that. to like, share. <laughs>